Hey guys, Sandra here from Metalwani with Stefan from Obscura. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. We just arrived in Toronto earlier today and preparing our show. Should be sold out tonight and can't be better. The tour's doing well and well, let's see what Canada has to offer. Perfect. Uh, well, it's been a few months since the release of the last album, uh, Deluvium. What is the fan reaction so far? So far, it's definitely the most successful record we did and uh, it seems like all fans appreciate what we're doing, how we ended like a four album cycle with the four records we did in a row. And I think it's a proper end of the whole story and the feedback so far is tremendous, fantastic. Yeah, well, excellent. Uh, being, as you said, the final leads perfectly into my question, final installment of uh, your little saga there. Um, how do they differ and how are they similar, all the albums? Because they all have unique sounds, but obviously they are tied together. Well, the, um, the four albums have been more or less connected uh, within the music, lyrics, uh, but also the visual themes. So um, if you just have a, a small look at uh, the album titles, it's Cosmogenesis and Akras is Omnivium, Diluvium, they're connected in all the colors, like uh, blue, red, green, yellow, they're all connected to each other, vice versa, uh, opposite, but also like a complete chain. and. To make the whole explanation very short, uh, it's basically a, a cycle of life and death. So the first record, Cosmogenesis, more or less deals with, um, well, the beginning of everything, like for my meta or yeah, for meta or uh, <coughs> macro view, and uh, it goes on with Omnivium, the evolution, and the third one is Akrasis, developing your own consciousness. While the fourth one, Diluvium, which was just released, is basically the end of all ends which then starts again with the first album. So it's it's like a complete closed story. There won't be a fifth record. Um, it's it's simply done. And I'm glad that we have finished what we once started 10 years ago. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And I, I love all the albums, but I think Cosmogenesis still might be my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, as you're talking about the, the artwork, they all different are different colors, but they're very similar. Uh, what was like, what what is the the artwork itself? Each record has uh, its own artwork, that's yes. for sure. But what uh, actually makes it looking very similar is the fact that we use the same, or what means used, we work with the same artwork designer, the, art, uh, the same art director, Orion Landau, mm -hmm. from the United States since more than 11, 12 years now. And from my perspective, it's very um, well necessary to build uh, a certain image for a band that you work with the same people in a, on the long term. That, I mean, the, the quite obvious part is the, the art direction, but uh, in terms of sound, it's the same. Our uh, sound engineer and producer is the same guy who recorded the first demo in 2003 with us. So there's a very long connection, and together you basically form how the band sounds, how the band looks. Same goes for the photographers we work uh, with. And this is simply something we started, and we stick to the people on the long term unique sound and it's very consistent mm -hmm. that way it's perfect uh, were there songs that didn't make it onto the album and there probably were are they going to be used for future albums even though it's not connected to the whole cycle good question um, we finished basically every song we uh, we brought up to a certain level but we have a couple of skeletons like rough ideas um, well on several hard disks but uh, I don't think there's uh, a song we recorded and that was not used left so we basically used everything and of course there are a couple of ideas that may see the light of day on future releases like on Cosmo uh, on Diluvium there are also a couple of riffs I wrote back in 2010 for um, uh, Omnivium but that happens I guess to every musician Some sometimes you, ha you, you have riffs or ideas you simply don't see fitting into a certain certain idea and you have that for years and years and years and once you find a solution, it's done. Just normal. Okay. Well, uh, uh, what are the differences for you for being in the studio and performing songs live? And how do you feel your songs translate to the stage? Mm, that actually changed over the years a lot. Mm -hmm. Playing live is completely different than uh, recording an album in the studio. That's kind of kind of obvious. But in the studio, you basically record two or three months, at least that's the time we take to produce a record from scratch. Playing live 
is a different story since you perform those songs for at least two or three years and in case you're lucky uh, you created an evergreen like anti-cosmic overload you have to play forever and you better write songs you can play live and this is something we had to learn the hard way and this also affected uh, the songwriting a lot since my my aim with writing a record is basically that I'm able to bring everything I have on a record on stage because it's it's simply my approach it's uh, there's no no big reason behind it but I simply want to be able to have arrangements done that are basically functioning in a, in a life situation and that as I mentioned that changed over the years a lot so Acrasis and uh, uh, Diluvium the new records they're all possible to play live and that's actually what we're doing just on this tour we uh, we focused on those both records since for Acrasis the previous record we were not able to play in the United States so that's why we have like a best of set but when we go back to Europe in February we play I guess more than half of the set only from Diluvium to present the new record. Okay. Was it hard for you to uh, decide which songs to play in one set? Um, actually, not too hard. We, um, of course, had to choose uh, between, uh, well, a history of uh, 16 years. <laughs> but um, from the new album, The Luvin, we simply choose the, the singles that have been re- released before uh, the album was out. And that's the title track, The Luvium, that's Mortification of the Vulgar Sun, a more almost balladesque song and Emergent Evolution which is I would say a classic obscure song so we cover basically everything okay great Uh, so you are half about halfway um, through your North American tour with uh, Beyond Creation and Archspire and just it's just a huge lineup of bands for one show Um, you've played with Beyond Creation before how is it with this tour um, since you named Beyond Creation, it's quite funny since uh, when we played in 2011 supporting Omnivium, Beyond Creation have been one of the local bands in Montreal. They've been yeah. one of those many Very bands that, that open up a show, like a promoter uh, thinks it might um, be cool to have a, a local band. And Beyond Creation back then definitely, definitely blew our minds because they are simply first of all nice people and second of all great musicians yeah. and we also made sure that we spread their cities to a couple of A&Rs and they finally made it to uh, Seasons of Mist and then we took them out on the on the road to Europe for Akrasis tour and we became friends uh, I mean in a heartbeat yeah. it's great people but the same goes for Archbaya we had them on a tour in Japan In Ferry is quite new to me but uh, I really like the m- music it's um, very technical but also melodic at the same time and they are they are great live band and exist are actually friends of mine um, with Max Phelps being the, the front man and uh, guitarist and singer he is my bandmate in Death to All so it all closes the whole band <laughs> and what I have to say we picked all the bands on our own so all the tour lineups we are doing we basically choose the bands that are touring with us and it seems like people honor it. This is the biggest headlining Europe, uh, the headlining US tour we ever did. Um, today's sold out, and a couple of other shows are sold out as well. And there's nothing more you want to have. It's everybody smiling when when they leave uh, the show, and it's turning out it's very good for all the bands on the bill, and we're all doing fine. So couldn't be better. <laughs> Perfect. Um. Is there a specific tour or live experience that really stands out to you? There are so many. <laughs> um, there are a couple of wishes uh, I have, a couple of bands I would love to tour with, like Megadeth or uh, Dream Theater, mm-hmm. as well as Testament. That would be that would be an honor, for just out of a fan perspective, or Behemoth as well. But um, from the past, I would say our first Japanese tour, 2010, with uh, Tripticon playing the first shows with Tom G. Warrior and uh, Steve DiGiorgio playing in our band as sub as bassist that was mind blowing and I had my birthday at the same time so <laughs> everything came together I won't forget that at all but the same the same for the very first tour we did the same for the first uh, North American tour we did in 2009 there are so many stories and I always keep the good times in mind <laughs> great um is there any band, I know because you like to take bands that you're a fan of along with you, as you said, um, and you like to support bands that you think should be supported and, you know, you stick with your 
people that you like, um, which I think is fantastic and not a lot of people do that. Is there a specific band that you think is lesser known or underground that you would like to give a shout out to so people can actually check that out? There are actually a couple of bands and many, many of the Tacta fans might be uh, familiar with a band from Sweden called Surreption. Fantastic band. Um, Alarum from uh, Australia. I'm not sure if they, they had one or two records out uh, through Willow Trip. Small band, but great musicianship. And I mean, Exist is a good example. Not too many people are familiar with the band, but I hope they get uh, a bigger yeah, audience will. now yeah, with, <laughs> with playing there. And there are always bands popping up. And I'm always listening to. I'm I'm actually pretty much at the poles of the underground. I'm checking out new bands basically every day. And if there's something I like, I I write them on my list and I do perhaps. <laughs> Great. Um, so obviously, Obscura is named after a Gorguts album, Canadian. As well. um, <laughs> are they still as big of an influence to you as they were before? I absolutely respect Luke Lee May, and I also had the honor uh, playing a tour with him, being in Death to All like two or three years ago. And uh, I love still as when I listened uh, to Obscura, that record, the first time that Gorguts are absolutely original. There's no other band sounding like them, and that was actually the reason why I chose that name back in the days. It was, of course, yeah, it's like a one word nobody used at that time, but also I love the idea of being original, of having a sound nobody else has, and this is definitely something I'm looking up to uh, Gorgots as well. Also, Colored Sands is a killer album. They're more or less a comeback records they did. So. Perfect. Um, and just to close things off, how is your other band doing, Vulcandra? Thurkandra is actually working on uh, the fourth album and I got uh, during the last couple of months, actually the last two years, many offers to do North America. So we try to make it happen and uh, when a new record is out, and it should be out by first half of 2019, then I'm very sure we finally make it over. Perfect. So after this you guys are off to Europe in February and what's next after that? More writing? Uh, no, we already uh, announced a Japanese tour. In 2019, uh, we're working on Australia and a couple of other tours. So it's just all around the world. <laughs> yeah, it's we basically play a world tour for each record, and there's a certain plan laid out, and most of it works out. Some didn't. For example, we never played in uh, uh, South America. This is on my bucket list, as well as a couple of other countries I haven't been visiting so far, like Iceland, Europe, or Turkey, and. Uh, many Asian places we haven't been able to visit so far but I love traveling I love traveling and if you're able to go with a band somewhere meet locals and then see not what tourists usually see this is this is simply uh, simply the best thing you can do perfect well on that note thank you so much for joining me have an amazing show amazing tour amazing everything thanks guys see you around goodbye